you all for, for fascinating views from different angles, for your time discipline, uh, which gives us now uh, the possibility to have uh, time for discussion. Uh, first of all, I would like to ask you and the panel whether someone wants to reply or contradict or especially support something what somebody else in the panel said. Uh, anyone? Please, uh, Christophe. <coughs> yeah, thank you very much. Maybe I just want to be back on what you mentioned regarding the, what I call the responsible mining activities, which is uh, very important for the future. Uh, I want to s specifically stress that first, we need to invest in terms of research development to define what's going to be the responsible mining. I mean, how, could, how to design a mine with a very low environmental footprint, a very low uh, water consumption, very low waste production, and so on. So you can decline on every type of indica environmental indicators. So we have already some clue, we have already some directions to move forward, but we still need to invest in this direction. Second, very important, the social aspect. And uh, for sure, all what we are doing right now, at least in France, regarding the development of new mines, either on our country or abroad, is within this concept. And within also the, the aim of relocating a significant part of the added value in the country, uh, help the country to develop this type of mining activity instead of, uh, uh, let's say, dirty mining. And uh, so I fully agree with what you mentioned. It's a real critical uh, uh, point to, to address and to success if we want to be able to, to develop this new mining activity. Jonathan. Yeah, I would, I would like to make one thing very clear. The materials that we're talking about, they will not come from G7 countries. They will come from different countries. And the statement or assuming that this will be the case is also very dangerous because we lose time in taking action and putting attention where it's needed. The most prospective projects are in, for example, in the case of copper cobalt in the copper belt, right? That's Zambia, Democratic Republic of Congo up to, the, um, up to Angola, right? The next generation of, of new projects will probably in the orogenic belt. That's Afghanistan, Pakistan, Iraq, right? Not on the radar for everyone. Um, now we're talking about Saudi Arabia, the Nubian Shield, the Arabic Shield, right? This is where we need to focus our attention. And it's very dangerous if we seem to believe that that we can get away with putting policies in place and developing and subsidizing projects in the developed countries. We need to put our attention, uh, our attention to these type of countries. And I totally agree we need to do this in a sustainable manner, but it needs we need to take the responsibility in solving the problems there mm -hmm. and not here. Thank you, Philip. Well, uh, I perfectly agree with what uh, Nicolas said uh, about the uh, necessity to take care of environmental and social problems. But you have also, unfortunately, to take care of political problems. And remember one thing, uh, which is valid for fossil fuels, but also and historically far more uh, for metal mining. This is what I call the commodity curse. Uh, remember that a country uh, which bases its development only on mining is fairly often an unstable and corrupt one. Uh, let's put it frankly. Uh, if there is a country which should be at the top of African development, it should be the Democratic Republic of Congo. And because of, cobalt, be, be, because of copper, because of cobalt, because of coltan, because of diamonds, the DRC is what it is right now. So, unfortunately, uh, we have to live with that. And that explains why there are very few countries in the world which have uh, uh, really managed their commodity curse. Norway is the case. Chile for a certain time was one. Now they are thinking of nationalizing the, the resources, which is probably not a good solution. Botswana was for diamonds, but there are very few cases of country which have managed to uh, advert the commodity curse. So this is something which we have to take into account. And the fact that anyway, 
the only good forecast that honestly, I'm, not, I'm never sure an economist can be honest, by the way, but if I were an honest economy, the only forecast I could make on all those metals is that tomorrow prices will be different than today. And the only thing I'm sure of is the volatility of prices. And on that volatility, you must manage to build long-term strategies. Good luck.